This video is brought to you by Squarespace.com. We're living in a time where there are more styles and aesthetics than any other time in history. There is a genre for every type of personality and for all the people that think they're too unique and cool and too left field and too special. There's a subgenre for you. But this year specifically, I feel like things have taken a leap and have become increasingly meta. There's been a huge shift in the way fashion's being consumed, and by effect, there's been an even bigger shift in the way it's being produced. And I think that some of these things that I'm about to show you are gonna be pretty interesting. Some of you might associate with a couple of these, and some of you might not even know what some of these are. Regardless, I think the new styles that dropped this year have been the most interesting yet. Just really capitalize on the interesting part. I didn't say good. I said interesting. So I'm gonna start strong with this head because I know this is raising a lot of eyebrows right now. So what is this, huh? Well, I feel like this is more than just a genre. It's more of a state of fashion. Nothing core or everything core. Depends how you see it. This Hypebeast article coins it as nothing core, but I feel like everything core also works equally in a meta commentary type of way. I feel like this kind of just pulls inspiration from everything to the point where it resembles nothing. Just focusing on the idea of shock value and virality rather than just being a cohesive look, which is not unfamiliar, but I feel like this takes it so much further. Instead of catering to a specific culture or a personality, it caters to the idea of engagement in an algorithm-based game. So this, in my opinion, is the same type beat as an optimized YouTube thumbnail. Just this stuff. We know it works, right? This is very effective, but it is it ugly? So, a lot of the times, but nothing core right here. You see this easy blend. I feel like this is the fashion version of this. And like the YouTube thumbnails, it's very effective on a feed. I'm not gonna lie. And also not to say that all of these are ugly. You know, some of these are crazy and, and beautiful and, and actual thought out works of art. But the downfall of this type of genre and this type of format of fashion is the lack of focus and consistency. Individually, these might be really cool visually, but where is the culture here? What is this supposed to be? There's no culture to grab onto. It's all optics and lack of substance. Just so many different diet culture gimmicks just flooding the algorithm and the market to the point where we don't even know what anything means anymore. It's what happens when you focus on virality and attention over creativity and expression. What if your style said nothing about you? I feel like there will be a rebound to this sometime soon, but in the meantime, there have never been more styles. There's so many that we just start around with clothes now. We're just LARPing sometimes. We're being silly here. Next, we got stealth wealth or quiet luxury. This stuff right here is kind of ridiculous. But anyways, here are a couple of looks from this so that you kind of get the gist of what I'm talking about. And you might be thinking, right? Why does this look like a Banana Republic storefront? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's just your untrained middle-class eye does not understand what is going on here. This right here is not what you think it is. Essentially, it's a broke person pretending to be a rich person, pretending to be broke so that they can look even richer than they are because they are downplaying their wealth by trying to look broke, which in turn makes them look richer. It's a fucking mind game now. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I had to count with my fingers to understand this one. Playing 4D chess in a $500 Laurel Piana linen hat over here. Billionaire cosplay is the 1% dress up. Consisting of very subtle, unbranded, minimalist cuts and designs. This style was kind of really made popular through HBO's show Succession and how that series interprets the way that the 1% dresses. In other words, it's just sort by highest. The brand Laurel Piana is kind of the backbone of this whole look. I'll just take a brisk scroll through the web store so you kind of understand what we're dealing here. Yep. That's annoying, that's annoying, that's annoying, that's annoying. Look at that price, that's annoying, that's annoying, that's annoying. See, but even this stuff right here, this stuff is chump change, bro. This whole ready to wear part that you can access on the web store is essentially the dollar menu for this brand. I know, imagine going bag for bag 
with someone and they're wearing a Laura Piana silk cashmere blend t-shirt. And they got a whole custom made part of this brand, which is really where the money is. And I, I, I don't even want to get a quote on what that's about. I also don't think it's also in store only. And I personally don't think they would even let me in the store. So what does this style say about you? You know, what is this even, what is this about? Well, if you're the one of the 1.4 billion TikTok searches that are intrigued and interested in this aesthetic, statistically, there's a 99% chance that you are too broke to even afford it. We're dressing like the one percenters here. We can't all be the one percenters. We're the 99% that is not the one percenters. Taking stealth wealth to a whole new meaning, bro. Just wealth so stealthy, it doesn't even exist. You might try and resemble the 1%, but your bag is the 0%. And there are even fast fashion brands trying their hand at this ultra toned down, subtle billionaire cosplay with some of these like very deliberate use of boring cuts and silhouettes, which ironically just ends up looking like fast fashion, which kind of defeats the, the whole point of this anyways. So, what are we even doing here? A stealth wealth fit from Zara has got to be peak clown activity. I don't think it gets any sillier than that. Taking an interest in this style in general has its implications as well. So being pro stealth wealth implies being pro one percenter, which is being pro billionaire, right? Which implies being pro mega corporation, which implies being pro capitalism, which is pro inflation which is anti-McDonald's dollar menu. Which is pretty much pro-world hunger. So you're pretty much pro-world hunger if you support this. Hey man, that is on you. That is not on me. The next big style movement of the year is opium. You know, I'm so opium, it's crazy. <laughs> Nothing but opium. <laughs> Taking after Cardi's label, this is the fashion embodiment of a filthy beat. Like some of these fits feel like they're clipping, consisting of an overcompressed mix of avant-garde, dark wear, and post-punk. The opium style, I feel like, is insanely left field for how popular this is right now. A counterculture fashion aesthetic born from a musical fandom? I feel like that's about as punk as you can get. Yeah. You are real deal opium. What does that mean? It means Bane and those stylists are my favorite songs ever. The duality of Cardi and Joyers is also crazy. Because on one hand, you have the full on, these future punk darkware opium guys, just full on Kingdom Hearts big bad guy. And on the other side of the coin for this, this look, you have these guys. You know, just the kick.com number one demographic right here. Aiden Ross tier three sub mega zoomers as the other wolf inside of you, which is kind of funny. Like this, do I, this contrast is crazy. It's like the evolution from Magikarp to Gyarados. But even, but excluding the audience, right? Even within just the clothes, I feel like there's a lot of dynamic range here. You got the base model, you know, full all black, just all black everything. And then you got your allowance funded Ramones, obviously crowd favorite. Just if looks could kill baby, if looks could kill, we would have an overpopulation crisis. Whole lot of mid. But it's from these guys all the way to literally this might be Cardi. We don't know for sure. I love this style though. Even for people starting off, I feel like this is a very accessible yet unique angle to take when starting off on your fashion journey. And for people hitting their stride on this, I feel like there's so much room to innovate and personalize on this. And this type of stuff is great for fashion because not only is it heavily influenced by personal taste and choice, I feel like this is not very brand reliant at all. And sure, there are a, a couple of big brands that cater to this, like Balenciaga and Rick, but you can easily, easily achieve very similar looks with just vintage and unknown brands. I feel like if anything, you get more personal with this route as you're not relying on a centerpiece that is very known to everybody. And for that, I feel like there is a lot of value here. And just shout out all the magic harp out there. You know, without you guys, there would be no Gyarados. This makes a lot of sense. Lastly, I want to get into a styler topic that everyone will end up in eventually. Dying. No, but really though, I feel like everyone in their fashion journey will end up in this position, you know? And that is dying. Okay, but really though, I feel like this kind of fits the theme of this whole year's round of looks as it's not necessarily tied down to one aesthetic. The last style on this list is the uniform guy. It's the most personal look yet. 
Visually different for everyone, of course. But the uniform guy is the state of fashion where you kind of get comfortable and optimal in the clothes that you already own. So much so that you no longer feel the need to forcibly explore the different areas of fashion. Like when you're on a nice hike, right? It feels like a nice hike and then you finally get to the top of the mountain with a nice view. And you're like, oh man, this is kind of nice. It was a lot of work to get to this point. Saw a lot of cool things, try a lot of cool things. But right here, right now, this part, this is kind of nice. I'm gonna take a break here. And I feel like it's nice to enjoy that little pocket where you're like, oh man, I like the view here. I don't need to keep moving right now. And then eventually you are gonna move on from this and explore and try new things again. You don't have to keep walking. If you like where you're at, it's kind of nice to sit down and enjoy the view. Sometimes you just gotta take it in, bro. So what does this say about you? Well, it could mean anything, really. It could mean you finally got yourself and your style figured out and you're enjoying the fruits of your labor. Congratulations. Or it could be the current state of fashion is f***ing exhausting and it's just like, oh my God, man, where I can't wire. And then you're, you give up and you're like, I'm just gonna wear my MPC hoodie for the 40th time this week, which I get it, bro. It is equally reasonable. I don't know what's going on right now, but like I said it earlier about there being a rebound to all the madness, I feel like people will find their own little pockets in fashion and then eventually set up camp with a personal uniform. Just something to truly express themselves, whether it be loud or subtle, just the feeling of consistency and personality is sometimes nice. And I feel like the same essence of this can be captured with the sponsor of this video, Squarespace.com. There's nothing more personal than something that you did all by yourself. Squarespace is the best place to make a website for absolutely anything. They got a workflow system called Fluid Engine, which makes everything super simple and super easy to pick up on, even if it's just your first time trying to build a website. It's as simple as just dragging and dropping things. They even got an asset library for you so you can keep everything that you like organized in one spot, set up a good aesthetic palette over here. And one of the biggest tools that I've been using for my own personal brand is email capture. You know, get everyone in an email list, set up a club for yourself, and you can see it in action. You can go to my website, raise.online, which is where these NPC hoodies will be dropping on June 18th, baby. But then you'll land on this email capture page where you can sign up for the friends list. And this could be you, this could be your brand. And when you decide to sell things, they have all the e-commerce tools you need to set up a web store on your website, all in-house on Squarespace. And you could even connect a square reader to your phone and sell stuff in person using the Squarespace app as well. But if you wanna try this all out for yourself, Fluid Engine, email capture, you can go to squarespace.com slash frugal aesthetic for a free trial the website builder and then an extra 10% off your first order of a website or a domain. So go check it out now. Everything is live set up for you at squarespace.com slash frugal aesthetic. You're welcome. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. You know what else is powered by Squarespace? Raise.online. The NPC hoodies are live now on the site. Feel It feels good finally running the brand again. And thank you guys for letting me do stuff like this. I got a lot of stuff planned. This is the first of many cool things to come. And I really appreciate you guys taking part in stuff like this. And also, you're welcome, though. This is a sick hoodie. So you should be thanking me. Raise.online.